So one of my clients today sent me a link to a newspaper article about uh, strength training to failure, i.e. when you're working out doing as many repetitions as you possibly can and whether that was necessary or not. And of course, uh, more and more you're hearing people say that effort and how much effort you put into it is more important to how much exercise you put in. The article concedes that, but goes on to say that failure may not be necessary or even dangerous. So I thought I would send a reply, but I thought I'll just do it on uh, a video reply. So my first reply is, yeah, it's true. Failure is not necessary in order to get results. And people may want to avoid failure, but not for the reasons given in the article. So first of all, uh, failure, training to failure was first probably popularized, at least to my knowledge, by Arthur Jones and Nautilus. And just to clarify, a lot of people sort of took that as dogma. But I remember quite well that Arthur Jones said that failure was not necessary to get results. However, that measuring almost failure was very difficult to do. He acknowledged that you had to pass a certain threshold of effort in order to uh, get results, <clears throat> but not knowing exactly where the threshold was, that by training the failure, you were certain that you had passed that threshold, whatever it was, whereas trying to estimate failure uh, is much more difficult. And actually, recent studies by James Steele about perception of effort have said have shown that when people are asked to train almost a failure, they notoriously guess uh, much more conservatively. Now, having said that, uh, the article goes on to say that training a failure is dangerous. And of course, the authors, depending on what you're doing, they say that as you get closer to failure, your form may suffer. And as a result of your form suffering, you may hurt yourself. Well, first of all, uh, what's missing here is context. Is failure means to do as many perfect repetitions in perfect form as you can, which means that by definition, as soon as your form starts to suffer, you have reached, quote unquote, failure. And of course, it also depends on what type of exercises you're doing, some of which I don't think you should be doing in the first place. If you're doing burpees to failure, or if you were doing box jumps to failure, or if you were doing uh, clean and jerks to failure, then obviously as you do that, yes, your form will suffer and you're very likely to injure yourself. Although I would argue that none of those exercises is necessary to anybody unless they're competing in a sport that includes the performance of those particular movements where you're trying to do it uh, in order to compete against other people, which again, if you want to participate in that type of sport, that's entirely up to you. I personally don't think the risk's uh, worth it, but hey, to each his own, as long as they go in with their eyes open, knowing the risks that they're taking. But if you're doing a machine in a machine or even a proper uh, barbell, and you're doing it in good form, moving slowly, avoiding uh, being ballistic at the turnarounds where you're changing directions, not locking up your arms, not putting yourself in a position where the weight uh, might fall on you or, or these types of things, or even avoiding exercise where that might happen, then training to failure should be quite safe. But again, necessary, no. And I would bring attention to a new technique that Ellington Darden, a longtime proponent of training to failure, has come up with where people begin a set by lowering the weight slowly under control in 30 seconds and then doing uh, a number of repetitions after that presumably eight to ten repetitions depending on how fast you are short of failure but then ending that set with a final lowering of the weight in another 30 seconds which even though that doesn't bring you to failure it creates what failure was meant to do in the first place, which is create a deep fatiguing of the muscle, a recruitment of as many muscle fibers as possible in order to create an adaptive response, but without going to failure. So reasons not to go to failure is that, and especially deep failure, because 
what some people have done is rather than just go to where, you know, the person is form is still perfect and all these things, they've pushed it, they've used uh, intensity, extending techniques, uh, drop sets and, and, and rest pause and all these things, all of which may have their place, but they've used them excessively. So they made the same mistake that the people have made before, which was the, and the amount or volume of exercise was to do more is better. And then, of course, the whole idea of training to failure was to do less volume, but do it more intensely. But of course, you can have too much of any much of a good thing. And what happens is if you're pushing the muscles where you reach failure and you continue to push it, my understanding is that the nervous system continues to fire, trying to send signals to the muscles to continue to work when the muscles no longer can. And as a result of that, it can have a sort of a, an entire central nervous system fatiguing that may be difficult to recover from. So by going by to less than failure and, and then being able to recover quicker, you're able to maybe exercise more often, less wear and tear in the body, but not because you're gonna hurt yourself because the form suffers because <clears throat> Failure should occur long before form starts to suffer if you define failure properly. I would go on to say about the article that some of the folks uh, that are cited as the article happen to be people who really advocate doing extremely high volumes of exercise and really advocate the idea that volume, more volume is more important and less volume and more intensity. And as is the case with a lot of research, and there are people guilty on all sides of that, is it becomes what uh, I've heard Doug McGuff call advocacy research, which is where people start uh, research with the idea already of what they believe in and look for the facts that fit their existing theory, as opposed to people really looking simply for um, whatever is true, whatever that happens to be, even if it contradicts what they've seen before, which in fairness to Ellington Darden has come up with this new idea after decades of saying failure is now finding another way of doing it that he believes gives better results uh, than before. And he has the integrity to say, well, okay, maybe I have many pieces of the puzzle, but here's a missing piece of the puzzle and he's advocating that. Anyways, this is probably longer than I originally planned, but that's my response to the article, which I will uh, link to in the comments of this video. Bye for now.